Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is a reprint of a game I purchased prior to being a reviewer, and that game is New Salem. This is by Overworld Games. It's made by Brian Hank and Clayton Skanks, and uh, we're going to be talking about the new edition as well as the expansion for New Salem, The Constable. This is, of course, a review copy, and this is actually one I've already purchased. This is the full-blown version of the original first edition game, and in the game, you're going to be playing from three to eight players. It'll take about 45 minutes to an hour for ages I would say probably 11 and up in the game what has basically happened is New Salem is the new town after the Salem witch trials in the original Salem all the witches and or townsfolk who didn't want to bother with all the witches moved to New Salem to create their own new uh basically own new town However, witches may have infested the town along with them. You don't necessarily know if there are or are not witches, but you're going to need to build the town. And the players are going to be doing a drafting set of cards in their hand. They'll be collecting different locations like taverns and jail and market, black market and all that other good stuff to build. You can choose what you want to build. Basically, you'll get a head of cards. You'll choose one, you'll pass, and then you'll pass that along. So you get to know what your neighbors can choose to build and not. Witches are trying to go for their specific sets as well as the townsfolk are going to go for their specific sets. But not only that, the witches Witches can only win if the, the town is full of despair. The town sulk is trying to keep the town full of hope and keep it rid of despair. After five rounds, regardless of the number of players, if uh, the town has more despair than the number of players it says, and has little cue cards to tell you, the witches are going to end up claiming, being able to claim victory. And from there, the witch who has the most points, being the person who played the most cards that represents their symbols, will win. However, if the town has less spare, the despair than needed, then the townsfolk will actually have a chance for victory and the townsfolk the single area townsfolk who has the most points is going to be the winner instead all right that's the basic idea of the game let's go ahead and show you down below the new expansion as well as the basic content of the game if you haven't seen the original version so here is new salem and the constable expansion included on the side over here are all the base game stuff so you'll basically see that there's buildings about two times as many buildings in the base game you get your character cards your round tokens and then your four different abilities whether it's putting somebody on trial pardoning them uh, confession, we get it, which is uh, viewing players' character cards, and cleansing, which removes despair from the town. These are the only action cards you're going to be getting in the base game, along with the characters and, of course, the buildings. But in this new game over here, you're going to see a lot more stuff. Now, first of all, as you can see, the characters from the previous game are still here, as well as all of the different unique uh, towns cards. And they have actually some new ones, some new and interesting ones, like the cemetery one, as well as the black version, which is like the jail. These cards are pretty interesting, but they're just unique new town uh, cards. You're also gonna get your round cards here, which will probably be round tokens. This is, of course, a prototype, like I said. You'll be getting the constable himself, which is basically the person that has the constable is going to be controlling the game as far as the action cards. You're gonna have the constable tokens, of course, the despair and hope tokens, and these are what you saw from the previous game, the trial and the cleansing cards, and now you see there's a bunch of new action cards throughout the game. These are gonna pop pop down and be abilities that you can choose to use as the game continues, and depending on the number of players is how many cards are going to be added to the deck. The same will be said for the uh, amount of witches as well. So that is the basic cards you're going to be getting in the game, as well as all the different tokens and whatnot. Let's go ahead and talk about how a game works, and then we'll go ahead and show you the setup and a couple turns of play. So when explaining this game along with the constable, I'm just going to assume that you haven't played either one, so that makes it easier. You get the full walkthrough as well. To start the game off, you're simply going to take your four good guys, your townsfolk, and your two evil witches, and you're going to put them together. If it's a larger player game, then you're going to actually add witches and, of course, townsfolk into that and shuffle it up. It'll tell you on the cards what you're going to add depending on the deck, which I'll show you down below. Then you're going to deal out one of the cards randomly, face down to every single player, and get rid of the other ones. Then everybody's going to look at their card and see what they are. If they're a witch, they want to make the town have despair. If they are a townsfolk, they want to keep that despair away. Now the witches have to be really smart and try and place as little despair as possible. Uh, at the beginning because they want to seem good. You could, of course, win the game even if people know you're a witch, but that means that you can be put on trial, which is generally going to happen. The townsfolk will put you on trial if they know that you're a witch. And when you're a witch, you can't put de uh, despair tokens in the town if you're on trial. So be sneaky about it, right? And you're going to be basically getting a hand of cards to start the game off. Depending on the round, it'll tell you that this one, first round is draw three and you can play two. You're going to draw three cards. You're going to play one of them in front of you face up, or uh, face down, 
and then you're gonna pass the other two cards. After everybody has done that, you're gonna flip over those cards and enact whatever it says. Sometimes it'll do nothing, sometimes it will get rid of despair, sometimes it will give you hope, and sometimes it will put despair in the town. Then after you've all done that, you're going to look at the rest of your cards and continue the process. When you get down to the last two cards in your hand, you'll have an option to either pick one of them or pick neither of them and simply put them on the bottom of the deck and draw a new card at random and play that one. It's risky and random, but it might come in handy if you're a townsfolk with despair in your hand or if you're a witch with no despair and you can justify why you got a despair because now you've accidentally placed it from random top of the deck. Then after that has been secured, you're going to do the constable phase where you're going to put down an event uh, for the round you're going to then let the choose a constable to start the game off depending on I don't know the last person who saw maybe the Salem witch movie and that player is going to then be able to decide whether they want to buy or purchase an action card or event card uh, they will then use that instantly and it will do something different sometimes it'll be putting people on trial or cleansing the town or different abilities depending on what's available in the round pool players are also able to give hope to you as the constable and let you utilize a card now, they're going to actually hope that you use the, the hope for what they want you to, but you don't have to, which is also a tricky thing that a witch can do. And not only that, but if somebody thinks you're a witch and uh, you've held on to the constable because you don't get rid of it unless you play a, an action card, you can be forced to play a card and, and based on the amount of hope you have. So the highest action card is six. If somebody gives you enough hope so that you have six, you'll have to play a card, and then you have to choose to pass the constable to somebody else who hasn't been one. You have these constable tokens out, and if you have been the constable, you're going to get one of those tokens, and uh, you cannot pass it to somebody who already has a token. After the last person who doesn't have a token gets past the constable, they get a token and everybody else but them clears their tokens and you're able to pass the constable on to players again. If you're on trial, you can't be the constable and you can't put hope or despair down on the board. And generally that's gonna be good or bad depending on who you are, I suppose, and what team you're on. Then after that, you're going to go to the next round and it'll tell you how many you draw. Draw four, play three, and you're gonna to continue to build your tableau, which is your town. You wanna to build sets based on the specific uh, witch or townsfolk that you are. Townsfolk will have two symbols, witches will have three, and you're going to gain points playing these cards down, uh, even if they do give you despair and whatnot. So townsfolk might actually have to play a despair because in order to complete their set of cards, they're going to have to play at least one despair down. So you have to justify why you're playing cards and why you're not playing cards. So it's easy to hide as a witch in the townsfolk because you go, oh, I need this for my specific set. Whether you do or not is kind of up to you, right? You'll play out throughout all five rounds, and at the end of the fifth round, if there is more despair on the track than is needed, then the witches will have the chance to win. If there is less despair, then the townsfolk will have the chance to win. You're going to tally up all the points in front of you based on the matching symbols for your uh, tableau and add those all up and add all the points you have and whoever has the most points is going to win on either side. There's only one victor, but it is a team game at the same time. Anyway, that's the basic idea for the game. I'll come down and show you how a little setup works as well as how a four player game for the first couple rounds will function and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so we're back and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to set up for a four player game. It's different for all the players, but it's pretty easy because you can look on the cards and it will tell you. So I added all the plus three and plus four cards into the building deck. The plus five through eights are gonna go ahead and disappear. You're gonna also take the character cards in general up to a uh, six player game, I believe. You're going to just get four of the townsfolk and two witches and you're gonna go ahead and shuffle these guys up and get rid of the extra witches and townsfolk. So now that it's good and shuffled, go ahead and put it there. You got the rest of the events as well, shuffle those up here and get rid of the fives and uh, five pluses and seven pluses and then you're going to have the trials and cleansing generally trials are going to be two unless it's seven or more you'll add an extra trial these are all you're going to get cleansing are basically going to last forever and you'll always be able to utilize these to protect your town so you've got ahead and set up your board we have each of the rounds set up one through five when the rounds are over you're simply going to flip them over and move on to the next round and you have your constable tokens and your hope and despair ready to go take this and shuffle it up really good make sure that you you, uh, don't know what everything is and pass everybody who's playing a uh, character card. So I'll go ahead and move this out of the way. Here we got three players right now. And uh, then you're gonna choose somebody to be the constable. Maybe it'll be this player for some reason. You'll get rid of these two cards here. You don't know if they're witches. There could be both witches in here, or they could be both townsfolk. It could be a 2v2 game. After that is all set up, then you're going to begin the round phase by dealing out everybody three cards. It tells you on round one how many you deal out. Three, and then play two. So take the top cards of the deck and deal them out. One and two 
and then three. Everybody's got their three cards. And now you're going to go into a drafting phase. Now, of, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what everybody is just so you get an idea of how it plays, but normally you're not gonna to get to know this information. It's hidden information. But I think for the purposes of this game, it's important. So right now we know that there's one witch and that there's three townsfolk. And these are their symbols. This guy's got a juggler and this guy's got a book. This is a book and a son, a son and two people. And this has three. The witches always have more tokens or symbols. So they always have the benefit of gaining more points points throughout the game um, and everybody's going to look at their hands and as you can see in this one this is the bank it's got a uh, hope on it and then these are the two symbols here on this one here it's just a juggler and then this one here it has a despair which is going to go on it if it gets played but it also has a book well he actually needs either this one or uh, this one here both of them are going to give him points because they have the same symbols that he needs but this one here will give hope even though it's not his color. So he's probably gonna pick the tavern here because it's going to give him uh, at least points. And everybody else is gonna do the same thing. The witch is gonna try and do something interesting. Maybe he'll play this one here. And um, then you're gonna just be passing these along to the next players. This guy here, he's got a son and people. So he's got the black market. Uh, and these ones don't do anything for him. So maybe he wants to play this one even though it gives a despair to the town. And uh, then, the, then this is gonna get passed. And then this player over here, he's got... Ooh, he's got a juggler, and, and that's not useful. Mm, so we'll go ahead and play this one. Even though it doesn't help, it will actually give us hope. And this will go over here. So now everybody has their hands passed, and then it's going to go on once again. In this phase, there's only two cards, so you can choose to take either one of these, and both of these aren't really useful for him. So he can choose to go ahead and discard both of them and play a one at random. And then I mean, this player's turn here, he's got two new cards. He needs the juggler, even though it's a witch, and it'll give hope. But hope is useful for witches and for townsfolk. So that'll go, and this will get rid of this. And uh, then you have this guy over here. Both of these are useful for him, but to get make sure that we don't have a lot of despair, we'll put this one down. And, um, oh, and then this one over here as well. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and flip. I'm going to flip over the first ones first to show you how it functions. Okay, so this one will go here. So... Before you actually pass the cards, you're going to actually flip, okay? I didn't mention that. So these cards are all separate. It's just gonna be the ones that, uh, you're gonna do the flip first, just like that. And then you're gonna go through and put everything down. So for instance, this one has a despair here. This one has a hope. This one has another despair. And this one here has an anti-despair. So it can actually get rid of a despair, which is what she will do. Even though she's a witch, she's making herself look good to the other players, which is a good idea, right? So right now we have one despair in the town. And if you look on the back of these things, it'll tell you how many despair is needed. So in a four-player game, only eight is needed at the end of the fifth round for the witches to win. Um, so now we've gone ahead and done that. Then we would do the draft phase again. And then we would go ahead and flip these guys over as well. So it would look just like this. Then you're gonna go ahead and put on your hope once again. And uh, there's no other despair, so that's good. Now, as you can see, there's colors on these cards here, and they're going to form a set. So in, for instance here, we have two black markets here, and you're gonna try and connect them. So that's one of the connections here. There will be another one. And if you can connect all three of them, you're gonna gain bonus points. One of them's gonna have hope, one will have despair, and one will have nothing. Uh, if you don't have a set though, you'll just gain points for having the same marked symbol. Then after that, the round will begin with the constable. The constable is gonna simply flip over an event for the round. And then based on the number of hope she has, which is nothing here, uh, she can buy cards. This one here is submersion. It says that you can give this card to a player. If at the end of the game, uh, the person is a Puritan, you add three despair to, to the town. And if they are a witch, you'll add, uh, you'll remove two despair. So it's a useful card regardless of who you are. But uh, if you're a Puritan, you want to put this on a witch. If you're a witch, you want to put it on a Puritan, right? But she can't play this because she doesn't have any hope. However, if players give her their hope, she could then choose take this card and play it on a player uh, that is not herself and hopefully gain one side victory points. Now, of course, they don't know what is going on or, or, or why, right? They don't know uh, who's who, so this might be a dangerous card to play right now. Trial, of course, if she had four, which she, she doesn't, she'd be able to play this on somebody, which would restrict them from being able to play hope and despair on the field, which is a good idea to get rid of the witch's ability to ruin the town. Now, you're never uh, out of the game when you have the trial. You still do everything. You just can't put down certain things. And the final thing she has uh, available for her is the Cleansing Five, which is if she had five hopes, she could cleanse two despair out of the town. Now, the only thing she can actually technically do is submerge in if everybody gave her her hope, but it's very unlikely that that's going to happen. And the only, and she's going to keep the constable, the only way she actually lose the constable is if somebody... 
uh, some, if, if everybody in the town or somebody gave her enough hope to play the highest costing card. That doesn't necessarily mean she has to play that one, but she can play any of the other ones. And that will make her pass this along. If she chose to play a different card and she actually got, the, got it, she'd give it to somebody else, and then they would get the token. And it would progress that way. So then after that happens, uh, the next round begins, and you have to uh, you flip over this, signifying the, the end of round one has been completed. You move on to the second round, you draw four and uh, play three, draw five, play four, draw four, play three, draw three, play two. And at the end of the game, that's, that's when you tally up the uh, despair to see which team is going to be... Uh, potentially uh, victorious and then also another thing too is as the next round comes along after they did their draft once again you would go ahead and take another event and put it here and if you ever utilize an event you would actually go and put another event down so you're going to have multiple events throughout the game which you'll be able to utilize and they all do different things not only that but in the buildings deck you're gonna get some interesting stuff and i already showed you uh, one of them which is the sanctuary it is basically uh it helps get rid of despair. So you have the sanctuary, you got a cemetery, and what's the other one? There's another one, the infirmary. And all three of these are basically a set. Once you're able to complete said set, then you're going to do whatever it says at the end of the game. So this says get rid of two despair, which makes you look good, right? And this gives you a hope. But if you have this set at the end of the game, you have to put three despair into the town's pool, which is really bad. So a witch might go ahead and play two of these, and then at the end of round four or five, might put another set down, making the game really, really nasty for the townsfolk. And vice versa with the other new interesting uh, set of cards, which are the black ones here. Once you have all three of these ones out, you're actually able to uh, remove three to spare from the town, which is really nice. Um, let's see if I can find the other one. No, not pillory, not jail. Let's see. It's somewhere in here, but you get the idea. Yeah, there it is. And this one is the exact opposite. You're going to be putting despair into the town, which is good to play as a witch. Like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and play the last one. That way I can get rid of despair. So these are the different cards that will become included in the game for the buildings. And of course, all the events do different things, which we'll go ahead and tub up and talk to you about all these cards and whatnot, just before we talk about the review. Uh, these, of course, are always going to be there and you can always choose to utilize them. And the final thing you need to know is if everybody has been uh, the... Uh, the, the guy here, the constable, when this gets passed to the last guy who doesn't have one, then everybody resets except for that specific person. So that person will then be able to choose any of these people. And another thing to note is if you're on trial, regardless of if you've been the constable or not, you can never be past the constable. You don't get to be the constable anymore. So you have to pass it to one of these two chums here. And that's the basic idea of the game, scoring points based on how many sets you have, as well as if you have the right symbols on your card and any cards that might give your team points at the end of the game as well. All right, let's come up and talk about the constable and some of the new cards and then what I think about the game and its expansion. Okay, some caveats and then the cards from the game. The first caveat is when you pass the constable, you actually give a play the player who gets it a hope. And hope is the currency, which I said before, you can pass around to players if you want to, specifically the constable, so that way that they can play cards to hopefully benefit your side. Nobody knows who anybody is, not even the witches. Most games you close your eyes and, and you know the witches will open their eyes. Not in this game. You could be hurting your fellow comrades or helping them. It's, it's really blind. You're going to have to just kind of not guess, but utilize what you know about the game to determine who's good and who's bad. All right, let's talk about some of the cards here, like Ritual. Choose two buildings owned by any two players and switch those buildings. A Pardon for five, give it to any player. If that player is on trial, discard their trial card. As long as they have Pardon, they might not may not be put on trial. This is from the original base game, but it has a new effect of giving it to somebody. Prayer, choose an event that was revealed during a round, play it on the bottom of the, place it on the bottom of the uh, event deck and draw an event to replace it and you remain the constable. The Coercion card, take a building from any player that player chooses a different building to take from you rebirth shuffle your character card into the unused character cards and deal yourself a new one this card is worth two points so you might change your stripes halfway through the game hysteria look at all the of the unused character cards and that will be for two that's pretty useful actually get to know uh basically how many witches are going to be in the game. And pleading, show your character card to another player, you remain the constable. You get the idea, there's more of them though. And of course, in the expansion, you get the constable, you get the event, extra events, and you get a couple new locations. And there's, a, I believe, a deluxe edition that comes with a mat. We actually played this live with the creator, uh, Hank, so if you want to go ahead and check out the entire live play, you can do that on our Facebook page. Uh, it, was a, it was a lot of fun, so there you go. Um, so anyway, what do I think about the game? Well, as I said before, it was a lot of fun playing the game, but uh, what do I personally think? Well, I'm gonna jump, jump out and play this game specifically. This is a trader game, but it's also a team game, 
and it's also an individual game, which means it's going to be a niche because you're working together to a point. And even if you know who the witches are and they are on trial, you can still lose the game because people can be greedy. Greed is the most dangerous thing in this game. If you are trying to get as many points as you can, you're going to be making your town suffer because you're not helping them. You're also going to be... Uh, De a detriment, right? And your team, your side may not win, which will give you no potential of winning. And not only that, but greed is important to know about, but also working together as a team is, is a good and a bad thing as well, because there's always somebody who's going to be slightly more greedier than you are, which kind of forces you to be it forces that craziness to happen throughout the game. Witches are going to be minimal in the game, and there might not even be witches, but if there are, witches have a higher likelihood of winning the game due to the fact that they have more of the available points to get, and the fact that players that are good guys will be greedy, and witches who are bad guys will simply play the cards they need to to, to play. And you're never really going to know who's good or bad. Some people are going to be able to look at certain players' cards and whatnot, and that will give you certain indications when players play down the certain sets of the locations you may figure it out um i like this game a lot okay with a caveat at i can see why some people wouldn't like it though and that is due to the fact that you're playing as a team and as your own individual person so you kind of want the team to win but not as much as you want yourself to win and that can kind of drive people nuts do you want to be the sacrificial lamb in this game which could happen you might be trying to help your team so much that you gain no points and somebody else wins or do you want to be the super greedy person where everybody else makes it so that you're the person who wins uh it, it, it's one of those juggling things you have to kind of control the game just enough to where the witches don't win and yet you still score enough points uh, to beat everybody else. And of course the witches, their goal is to sneakily start playing things, to slowly increase the amount of despair. They've got the cards they can utilize as a constable a witch is very very powerful. And the fact that the witches are able to put other people on trial regardless of whether they're witches or not. When you put people on trial too, which is interesting, at the end of the game if you put a witch on trial that's minus two despair and if you put a puritan on trial that's plus two to spare. So putting people on trial can be a good and a bad thing for your team, depending on what occurs. The game is only going to be the same amount of time, really, between all five rounds. It can be more players, which take a little longer. But for the most part, the time remains steady, and that's awesome. The artwork is really nice. It reminds me of the Barker's Row game, same artist, I believe. And that was, I love the game. I love the style of that game. This one has that same artwork style. If you like trader deduction games, this one's probably something you should check out. And determine for yourself if it's going to be something you're going to like. As long as you don't mind that individual aspect of the game, I think you're going to dig this one, especially because it's unique. I haven't seen any game where, where you work as a team in that whole deduction aspect, and then you have to come out on top on your, on your own. And that really makes it unique and different. I also think it increases the tension and increases the like frustration and fighting. If you have people that are fighting against in resistance, uh, this one's going to be even more so. So it depends on the group, of course. But if you're okay with that craziness and that interaction between people, like, no, why'd you do that? Why'd you do this? Or I was on your team it's like i didn't know you were on my team because we don't know each other you know then it gets really really intense and really really fun and i think that's where it shines the most playing with a lot of players is even better but it does play lower which is good for a trader game because there's not a lot of games that do three or four players and this one actually does that overall though i really enjoy this game do take it for what you will because i do enjoy trader games in general a whole bunch but i like the unique aspect for me oh i'm going to recommend you decide for yourself on this one does it sound interesting is it unique enough that you want to pick up the choice is up to you the game is in the description below with the second edition there's also the deluxe copy and if you want you can pick up the mat uh, if you already have the first edition of the game which i do and i personally had before i did any reviews and whatnot uh, then you're probably going to want to get the deluxified edition where you actually just get the constable and all the extra cards and you can just put it in your first edition box it's up to you really what you want to do but there is those options which is really really nice anyway that's all i got to say about the game new salem with uh, the second edition and of course the constable go ahead and check it out if you're interested in picking it up all right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It does help. We do really greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out everything boardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and my own site, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And don't forget to go ahead and check out New Salem if you really enjoy these trader based games with a unique, interesting variant. And of course, the lower play count, which is lower player count, which is really nice and interesting as well. Uh, do go ahead and do that. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I look forward to deviously creating despair in the town with you next time.